one week. Let me just thank everybody for you know your part in this in this movement because you're why I'm running in this race. You know, for years I felt like I was on a personal crusade uh, in this in this movement, and I'm glad that now it's official and I have I have all this company. You know, I think the the Tea Party kind of started, I believe, uh, after Rick Santelli on CNBC uh, criticized the, the, the bailouts. But months before CNBC, before uh, Rick Santelli started criticizing, I was the loudest voice on that network, uh, criticizing uh, the bailouts. I was on CNN, I was on Fox, I was screaming as loud as I could that this was a mistake. And unfortunately, my warnings were ignored by the very experts who had ignored my warnings years earlier. Because, of course, the, this, the bailouts were the result of an economic crisis that was created by the government. And they didn't waste any time using the crisis to their advantage. But I was on television for years as a lone voice, going back to 2004, warning about an economic and financial crisis that was going to come. That was the result, not of the failure of capitalism, but of socialism, of government central planning, of an aggressive Federal Reserve that kept interest rates too low, and of a Congress that passed laws that created moral hazards that led to the financial bubble that ultimately burst. And what I was so fearful of when I was going around on these shows and making these forecasts, and of course, if people don't know, I wrote a book. I spent most of 2006 writing a book that came out in February of 2007 called Crash Proof, How to Profit from the, the Coming Economic Collapse. But what I was so fearful of was not the collapse that I knew was coming, that was inevitable, but my fear was how the government would respond in the aftermath of that crisis. I knew that during the Bush years, we pretended that we were following the doctrines of capitalism and free enterprise, but that was just rhetoric. And unfortunately, that set the stage for Barack Obama to run on a change campaign and to try to vilify capitalism, to try to blame the economic crisis on greed and a lack of regulation. And their solution, of course, was to take the Bush agenda and rapidly expand it to bail out and to stimulate and to really socialize what was left of our market-based economy. And that is exactly what has happened. And I think the people in this room, in this root movement, sense uh, the mistakes that are being made because they're shredding what's left of the Constitution and they're adopting economic policies that have failed for centuries in every single nation that have tried them. But for some reason, uh, the people in Congress and Barack Obama think that they're just a little bit smarter than the socialists of the Soviet Union or China or Cuba or anywhere else where these uh, policies were, were tried and failed. And they think that the government, not the market, should decide how resources are allocated. And as a result, the economic crisis that's coming People think the economic crisis is over. It's just begun. The real crisis is going to start maybe as soon as 2010. But I think at least in 2011 or 2012, we're going to have a complete economic collapse because the currency that they're printing, like it's going out of style to pay for all these bailouts and to pay for all the stimulus, is on the verge of collapse. And when it does, we're going to have a much worse crisis because our money is going to lose its value. And now even the people who still have jobs are going to have a hard time when they try to spend a paycheck that buys very little. So before this happens, we need to take back this Congress. We need to get rid of the people who have been creating these problems. And we need to replace them with people like me, individuals from the private sector who understand where the government screwed up, that understand that the source of our problems is not the market, but the government that has interfered with the market, and that understand what the proper constitutional role of government is. And if the government had simply followed the Constitution, we wouldn't be in this mess. But they have turned this country into, you know, at one point we were the world's largest creditor nation, now we're the world's biggest debtor. We used to be the biggest manufacturer and exporter of manufactured goods. Now we're running trade deficits with every country on the planet. We have 16, 17% of the population now either unemployed or underemployed or working part-time. And this is only going to get worse unless we restore, uh, yeah, it's five minutes already? <laughs> five does fly. Keep going. Anyway, look, my point is, together we can do something to change this country. We can send a message to Washington. We can send a message to the Republican Party. We're not going to keep electing people that promise us liberty and freedom and small government and deliver the opposite as soon as they get into office. This crisis is not because of us, it's not because of the people
people in this room, it's not because of capitalism, it's because of a federal government that doesn't understand its role, that has interfered and over-regulated and overtaxed this economy to the brink of this 